the winter of 2014 to 15, was particularly harsh in Southern California, and we got very little rain. At this bone chilling time of the year, my thoughts always turned toward warmer waters. Friends of mine had been to Palau in November and suggested I go there to film. China Airlines was offering a special Dima fare, so I booked a flight for March. It took 25 hours to get there from Los Angeles via Taipei, but it was well worth it. Palau? Where in the world is that? friends asked. Palau is a remote chain consisting of between 200 and 500 islands depending on the source I consulted. It is located in the South Pacific, west of Guam and Yap, and east of the Philippines. The islands are formed of limestone and are referred to geologically as a karst formation. This means the limestone, a soluble rock, has been eroded, which you can see at the base of each island, and often has sinkholes, caves, and tunnels in it. Palau was initially settled perhaps 4,500 years ago by people from present-day Indonesia. Spanish explorers reached the islands in 1543 and essentially dominated them until sold to Germany in 1899. The Japanese Navy defeated the Germans in 1914 and took over the country under a League of Nations mandate in 1920. This lasted until the U.S. defeated the Japanese in a series of battles, including a devastating one on the island of Peleliu. And in 1947, the country was designated by the United Nations as part of the Trust Territory of the Pacific Islands, under United States administration. In 1982, it entered a compact of free association with the U.S. and became fully independent in 1994, but dependent on the U.S. for security. Palau is a democratic republic with a president and two legislative bodies, the Senate and House of Delegates. The country is comprised of 16 different states. Hmm, I didn't realize these were among them. The total population as of 2014 was about 20,000, with the vast majority living in the city of Karor. The government provides all the usual services, a post office, sanitation, law enforcement to combat what little crime exists, a court system, and a jail. Rangers to patrol the islands, my old geezer administration, schools at all levels, a library, and infrastructure maintenance on the island roads and bridges. Something we need to do right here at home. There are many dive operators in Palau. Sam's Tours is one of the biggest. But when I travel, I prefer smaller dive operators who offer a more personal touch. My friends had recommended PDA. No, not public display of affection. Palau Dive Adventures. So I checked them out on TripAdvisor and found they had an excellent rating. Their office is overseen by Mary Ann and her sister Mary Grace. They operate a single boat, usually with no more than eight divers, and you dive essentially with the same crew each day, which helps foster a closer and more personal relationship. Here you see Jaywin, Dustin, and Jason. I liked what I heard and PDA did the rest, booking my hotel and arranging for an airport pickup courtesy of Cheryl, who always had a smile on her face.
There are many small hotels in the city of Karor. Apparently, this hotel needed its own defenses, as well as some pretty fancy resorts. Plow Dive Adventures is located in the Palatia Hotel, which was beautiful, but a bit too expensive for this old dive bum. PDA arranged for my stay at the Palau Paradise Hotel, which nicely fit my budget. It was also the top-rated hotel in Karor. I often hung this on my door so the staff wouldn't have to clean my room every day. But I guess you can take a peek. The room was more than adequate for my needs, and quiet despite being right on the main street. After very spartan water use during our drought in Southern California, it was nice to take a hot shower every day, once I figured out the controls for the one in my room. There were many restaurants within easy walking distance of my hotel. You had your choice of various ethnic eateries. Italian, Asian food from China. Eh, but I wasn't so sure about this. Handmade fish balls, Thailand, and Japan as well as fine American cuisine. The lunches served on the dive boat were often so filling, I didn't need to eat dinner. I did try the small restaurant, which served incredible amounts of good food for extremely low prices. Our group the first week also ate at Kramer's, where PDA presented newlyweds Todd and Christina a gift for celebrating their honeymoon with us. During the second week, I joined a different group for dinner at Mog Mog, located right in our hotel. Fancy food at much higher prices. But at least I saw the only crustacean I observed during the trip. Twice that week, I ate at Mingle's Sotai across the street, which features rather interesting decor. and challenges you to drink 16 shots, representing the states of Palau. Both times I ordered a good-sized helping of pineapple fried rice and a red rooster. Not that one, this one. The cars in Palau were generally small and efficient, even though the cost of gas was much lower than here on my island. I noted that although they drove on the right-hand side of the street, the cars had right-side steering. This is because most of them are used cars exported by Japanese, who trade in their vehicles every few years. These guys are getting one ready for the used car lot next door. How many of you have seen models with names like these? <laughs> I didn't think so. I like to walk around and explore the towns I stay in. It was interesting to view all the different businesses along the main street of Karor. It was good to see you could easily get the really important supplies here, eh, just like at home. There are visitor services available, museums to explore, historical monuments, a gym, the aquarium, the Coral Reef Research Foundation, and cultural centers. I was pretty tired after my long walk, but didn't require medical attention. Just a nice massage. Maybe I should have taken a taxi.
or one of the many buses that give tours of the area instead. Or maybe even a boat. What's not to like about a place where diving is the main thing on people's minds? Well, almost. Much of it is done along steep walls with a base, often at depths in excess of a thousand feet. But occasionally you can see the bottom. There are also channels between the islands, such as German Channel, blasted through the coral by Germany when it owned the archipelago and mined phosphate. An oolong channel where the current was so strong it almost ripped my fins off. You too can lose your virginity and become a happy hooker like these divers at Blue Corner. Reef hooks are often necessary so you can view the critters passing by without getting blown away yourself. Although we didn't actually scuba dive there, Christina and dive instructor John tested the cosmological powers of the limestone sediment at Milky Way. I preferred this instead. On my first dive, I had a little trouble with my BCD tank straps. But I told the crew I was just trying a new method of side mount. My inflator hose was gushing gas, so I just disconnected it and did the next two dives the vintage way, with no functioning BCD at all. By the second day, I had everything working properly, a bit unusual for me. The first week, we had a great group of folks diving with PDA. Two of them, Todd and Christina, were on their honeymoon after getting married in Hawaii and diving in Yap. Simon and Amy from Florida, and Barry and Ed from Australia rounded out the group. The second week we had an equally fantastic group, consisting of Robert and Megan from Korea, where he serves in the Army Band, Tobias and Mina from Sweden, and Susanne and Summary, two sisters from Singapore that I dubbed the Singapore Sirens. Sigh.